Hey, guys, welcome. Yeah, so before I begin, I'd like to thank the Lord Christ for uh, continually uh, improving our world and creating greater understanding and on a personal note for continually working on me and improving me. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, in this video, we're going to look at our first example of how to show that functions converge to their Taylor series. Uh, and I'll have a second example. And that time uh, we're going to work on showing that cosine converges to its Taylor series uh, for any center A. In this particular example, we're just going to show that each of the x converges to its Maclaurin series, meaning a is equal to zero. Now, I already made one example. Maybe I'll add more on finding numerical error bounds. And so check that video out. But what we're doing here is very different. We're not finding a numerical error bound. Uh, what we're doing is showing that functions converge to their Maclaurin series. Now, uh, while most of the functions that we love and are familiar with do converge to their Maclaurin series, not every function converges to its Maclaurin series. Here's a quintessential example of a function that does not converge to its Maclaurin series, and that is f of x is equal to e to the minus 1 over x squared when x isn't 0, and then 0 when x is equal to 0. Yeah? Okay, so this function does not converge to its Maclaurin series, but the task at hand is to show that e to the x does converge to its Maclaurin series. Yeah? Okay, okay. And the way we do that is uh, we take this uh, Lagrange error term, r sub n, and uh, we take its absolute value and then send the limit as n goes to infinity and show that this limit equals zero. If we can demonstrate this, then we will have showed that uh, whatever function that we're working with does converge to its uh, Taylor series. And again, Maclaurin series is just a special ta Taylor series, right? Okay, now uh, I don't need to erase that. Recall that uh, r sub n of x is equal to uh, the n plus first derivative evaluated at c over n plus 1 factorial and then times x minus a centers a to the n plus 1. Now, when we're finding a numerical error bound, we're given x on a closed interval and that's where we picked x from, from that closed interval. And we picked c from the open interval version of that closed interval. But here we pick c uh, we pick c inside of the interval a to x, yeah? So x takes on any value on the real x-axis, right? And a is the center, right? Uh, so this is more general, and we're going to need this in uh, example two. But here in example one, since we're working with the Maclaurin series, this a here is zero, and this in turn reduces to just x to the n plus first, yeah? Okay, so, um, all right, and therefore, this, this task is slightly easier than the task in example two, uh, but that's only natural, it's example one. And we're also working with a function f uh, that has uh, all derivatives being itself, right? So that too is a tad bit of a convenience, right? Okay, okay, okay. Now, um, so adopting this um, to the situation at hand, which is like looking at this in absolute value, by the way. Uh, r sub n, right, in this case, will have to be, and I'm doing that in blue, yeah, r sub n will have to be this um, for this particular function, right? Um, it will have to equal, um, it will have to equal, um, well, since f is e to the x, the n plus first derivative is going to be e to the x itself. And we want to evaluate that at c, so we're going to write e to the c, right? e to the c, and then times, it's going to be x to the n plus 1 over uh, n plus 1 factorial. And we need to look at this in absolute value and show that it goes to 0, right? Now, uh, e to the c for some c between 0 and x is just some real number. So, so like, and, but, but, but we need to pick c so that uh, e to the c is maximal, right? Like it's as big as possible. Okay, but um, whatever uh, biggest uh, value e to the c can be, it's just some constant, right? Like some real constant. So what we can do here is say that e to the c is equal to some constant m. 
and it's the biggest value that e takes on this m on 0 to x. Well, if that's the case, then uh, this here, right, this here must be lesser or equal to, it must be lesser or equal to uh, m, m times, m times um, x to the uh, n plus 1 over uh, n plus 1 factorial. And of course, on the left side of this is r sub n of x, right? So we're saying r sub n of x is lesser or equal to this. Okay, from everything else I said, that's, um, that, that makes sense, right? Okay, okay. Now, as I said, we need to look at uh, the absolute value of r sub n. And so that means I throw on absolute value here. But by absolute value rules, this isn't affected. And so I could do this, right? Okay, okay. And uh, of course, we need lim as n goes to infinity. Lim as n goes to infinity. Got it. Now, uh, soon enough, uh, on a blackboard, I'll be making a lot of Calc 1 videos. And uh, one of the first uh, set of videos I'll make is uh, videos on the squeeze theorem and a lot of interesting problems, so look out for that. And so, so uh, using the squeeze theorem, I'll prove uh, a claim I'm about to make, which is a famous limit. Well, famous too, right? <laughs> famous limit is that lim is n goes to infinity of, of um, x to the n over uh, n factorial for uh, x in um, positive r, this here, is equal to zero. Yeah? And so then using this limit, right, using this little guy here, right, using this, what we can say is that this right-hand side is m times zero, right? Obviously, I can write the limit after m, right? And so basically say this there. Okay, so we have m times zero. So that means that um, r sub n, an absolute value, is bounded on the right side by zero, right? And uh, from the get-go, right, by construction, the smallest r sub n can be a zero. So uh, it's also bounded by zero on the left, right? Uh, r sub n at worst is zero, right? And so that means on this side, I could also uh, throw a zero. And so then using the squeeze theorem, r sub n, an absolute value, uh, as n goes to infinity, must equal zero. And that's what was required to demonstrate uh, that e to the x, in fact, converges to its Maclaurin series. As I said, example two will be a little bit more work, uh, not that much more work, so look out for that. Uh, but otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, before I go, uh, Evo Morales, the president of Bolivia, is awesome. He's my new hero. And uh, you probably don't care. But in case you do, I'll, I'll leave a video a link to that below uh, so you can see why he's a hero. All right. Um, otherwise, take care. <laughs>